Okay, hello everyone and welcome to PMP Live and the continuation of Children's Book Week. My name is Leah, I'm a bookseller at Politics and Prose, and I have the pleasure of being your guide to this new format and introducing you to our moderator. Thank you so much for joining us where we continue to bring awesome authors and new books to readers like you. I'm so excited to welcome our special guests today, authors Erin Entrada Kelly and Terry Liebenson, and our moderator, Karen McPherson. Um, in just a few moments, we're gonna start our chats. If you have any questions for our guests, you can click on the Ask a Question button at the bottom of your screen and add one there. And at the end of our chat, we will have time for our guests to answer some of your questions. As always, please remember that this is a creative safe space and we ask that folks be respectful of one another and any questions and comments. And also, don't forget there's also that shining green button on the bottom where you can get your own copy of Erin's new book, We Dream of Space, and Terry's new graphic novel, Becoming Brianna, as well as all of their other awesome titles from our website. And if you're a student joining us today, please check with an adult before buying anything. <laughs> and lastly, Remember that unlike in our in-person events, our guests and audience members cannot see you through the screen. So you're welcome to come as you are, get comfortable and enjoy the discussion. Now, the event you're all waiting for, it is my honor to pass the discussion over to Karen McPherson, who will be leading the chat today. Karen is the Children's and Teen Services Coordinator at the Tacoma Park, Maryland Library. Politics and Prose has had the honor of partnering with her and the library on many awesome events over the years. She has also served on the Caldecott and Cybert Award Committees, so cool. <laughs> and a former reporter, Karen also writes special featured stories about authors and books for the Washington Post. So take it away, Karen, I pass it over to you to welcome our special guests while I bring everyone on stage. Okay, great. Welcome to everybody. We're just waiting for our authors to, to come on board. They should be here any minute now. And I'm gonna do a little brief introduction and then we'll get started with questions. So, hi, Terry. <laughs> hi, Terry. <laughs> and Aaron, hi, Aaron. Hi. Okay, so I am gonna start with a brief introduction of the two of you. Um, and I'm gonna go in alphabetical order. So I'll start with Aaron. Um, Aaron and Trotta Kelly, was born and raised in Lake Charles, Louisiana. She's earned a bachelor's degree and a master's in fine arts. She is the author of six books for kids and has won numerous awards. In 2018, she won the most prestigious children's book award, the Newbery Medal, for her book, Hello Universe. Erin often talks about, and I love this, celebrating kids who are underestimated and in her Newbery acceptance speech, she noted, quote, my greatest wish as a writer is that the person reading my book feels less alone, unquote. Today, Erin will be talking about her new book, We Dream of Space. The book focuses on three siblings who are struggling to create some kind of a common bond in their very troubled family at the time of the 1986 Challenger Space Shuttle tragedy. So welcome to Aaron. Thank you. Like and Terry, okay. Terry Liebenson was born and raised in Kingston, Pennsylvania, and she earned a bachelor's degree in illustration. In 2006, she created her own award-winning syndicated comic strip, The Pajama Diaries. The strip ran a new numerous newspapers for 14 years, and Terry only recently ended it, I'm sure it's sad, <laughs> um, so that she could focus on her children's books. Uh, Terry's first children's book, Invisible Emmy, was published in 2017, and it's been followed by three more books in the Emmy and Friends series, all of which combine art and text in what Terry calls visual storytelling. Terry will talk today about the newest book in the series, Becoming Brianna, in which she tells the story of how Brianna prepares for her bat mitzvah in the midst of friendship and family challenges. So welcome to you both. I'm so happy that we can have this discussion. <laughs> so I'm gonna um, go ahead and go right into questions. Um, I'm, I was fascinated to learn that both of you showed an early inclination towards becoming children book, children's book authors. I, Aaron, I read that you wrote and wrote and wrote as a kid, and you even self-published in your way some books. And uh, Terry, I read that you just 
I can't remember a time when we're not doing art. Um, so my question for both of you is, as a child, did you ever think that you might become a children's book author? And if not, tell us how, and most importantly, why you first began to write for children. And maybe I'll start with Terry this time, if that's okay. So, okay. Sure. Um, I kind of had it in the back of my mind about writing kids' books when I was a lot younger. Um, and in fact, uh, right out of college, I started to do a little bit of research into it. I was thinking maybe picture books. Um, but my ultimate dream at the time was to become a syndicated cartoonist or newspaper cartoonist. <laughs> That's a fancy word for it. And um, I ended up uh, getting my break, uh, well, first with a weekly comic and then with a daily. And uh, so that that took the forefront <laughs> of, my, of my mind uh, career-wise. So that kept me very preoccupied. And that was around the time I had kids, too. So I was pretty much doing that. Um, so it wasn't until recently, probably about five years ago, when um, I had some cartoonist friends start to segue into doing graphic novels or illustrated middle grade novels. And I kind of got in on the forefront of that, luckily. <laughs> and uh, the graphic novels really exploded onto the scene. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and there weren't a lot of uh, female uh, authors doing that at the time, those kind of like diary of a wimpy kid type of books. So um, and it was it was mainly men and Raina Telkemeyer and, <laughs> and so I kind of shot in between there. And there were there were definitely a few others, but um, but it was it was really good timing and um, and I found I really loved it. So that's that's sort of my late arrival into it. That's wonderful. Yeah. And Erin, how about you? So I knew from an, an early age that I was going to be an author. There was kind of like no other option. I was bound and determined. So, but I started my career actually in newspaper journalism. And then I was a magazine editor for a while and was writing books on the side as I did all that. I didn't come into to children's writing until you know, I thought in my head I was going to write these grand adult literary novels, you know, so that's what I was trying to do. But uh, I could not get past that 50 page mark. The stories would just fizzle out and die. So I started writing short stories and my short stories started getting published. And I realized looking at them collectively that they're all they all had uh, characters who were between the ages of eight and 12. They were all coming of age stories. So I thought there's something about that age. I mean, the short stories were written for adults, but mm -hmm. I just realized there's something about that age that's really compelling to me. So I kind of thought maybe that's the age I should be writing for and about. So I started devouring um, middle grade and, you know, realized how rich and complex and complicated it is and, and started writing it. And honestly, I just kind of like found my voice. I just, I was able to finish manuscripts. The ideas were just, you know, never ending and, you know, and I'm just in love with it. So that's kind of how I started. That's wonderful. That's, and that that's, which just leads right into my next question, which is basically the, the fact that both of your uh, books actually uh, uh, involve middle school and you are both so good at creating that world of middle school. You really make, people, an adult like me, feel like I'm back in middle school. And I wonder how, how do you do that? I mean, it, it sounds like it's sort of organic, Erin, but I'm just curious, do you, do you have to think about it at all to sort of put yourself back there or not? How does it work for both of you? And I guess I'll start with Erin, that's all right. So I think for me, you know, someone told me at, at one point, and I cannot remember who it was, they said, you know, we all have this age in our lives when we look back over our lives where everything changed. Mm -hmm. And it could be, uh, when our parents got divorced, when we lost a pet or a grandparent, but there's that age. And we tend to really remember um, our lives around that age. I don't know if that's true or if it's science, but uh, for me, a lot happened in my life when I was 12, um, mostly bad. And so that age, I really, really remember what it felt like. 
I remember what the school smelled like. I remember what the, the water and the water fountain tasted like. I mean, I really remember all these really tangible things about being in middle school in a way that I don't with, you know, let's say high school or mm -hmm. early elementary school. Middle school is really a, a palpable memory for me. So I feel like that's why um, it kind of, you know, spoke to my writing voice because it is organic in a way. Of course, you have to think about it, but it mm -hmm. felt very natural. And so, you know, if I tried to sit down and write a, a grown up, a book for grown ups, I don't think I have no interest in doing it. And I don't think it would work out because mm -hmm. it's just not interesting to me. So yeah. um, that I think that that kind of sums it up. Yeah. yeah, that's well, that's that's great. And Terry, how about you? Um, actually, I remember the way you described the water fountain in the book. <laughs> yes, in the book. Yeah. Isn't it like couple pennies or something like that? I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, for me, I'm just perpetually a 10 year old at heart, I think. So. <laughs> I am extremely immature. Um, that's, that's basically where my sense of humor lies. <laughs> uh, that helps. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's pretty easy. Um, no, actually, not not really easy. I um, I, I would definitely agree with what Aaron said. Um, as far as uh, I, I think, I feel kind of frozen in time at around um, age 12, 13, um, just because I remember around that time I was, um, I didn't have any particular trauma per se, but, um, but I remember being painfully shy. And there were, it was especially around middle school age, I think like seventh and eighth grade where I just kind of stopped talking. <laughs> and, oh, wow. and the only way I, I really had to express myself well was through art. Uh, through drawing, and I got a lot of praise for it, and I felt very much like myself, and it just became my form of expression, and I guess it just kind of never left, and I, I added words with it later on, because <laughs> I, I found the joy of writing as well, um, and cartooning, but yeah, I kind of, it's it's really palpable for me as well, and um, and I just remember those feelings. And that is actually how I created Emmy from Invisible Emmy, my first book, because I just kind of wrote from the heart. I just oh. wrote from a very genuine place because Emmy was basically myself. And uh, and I, a, a story that I had in mind, it, it, something true that happened to me a little bit earlier back in fifth grade came to mind as I was writing it. I just kind of wrote to write it just to see what would happen. And so that became kind of the plot. Uh, so that worked out, but <laughs> yeah. yes. <laughs> one of my favorite, it's one of, Terry, I have to say, it's one of my favorite graphic novels, Invisible Emmy. Oh, it's thank so you. Wonderful. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Great. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> that well, so well, let me let me. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna ahead and move on. I have I have another question. That both of your books seem to revolve around big events. Um, uh, in Aaron, your case, it's the uh, Challenger space shuttle tragedy, and in Terry, it's um, the uh, the about a personal event, but a big event about mitzvah. Um, and I'm wondering, you know, how did you decide to how did you choose those events, sort of as a way to uh, build your plot or have in the backdrop of your plot, that kind of thing. So, um, Erin, can I ask you to go first? Or sure. So, you know, for me, uh, the Challenger disaster is, you know, probably the first big news story of my lifetime because I was nine at the wow. time. So I remember it very, very well. And I think, you know, it, it's kind of been forgotten largely. And um, so I knew I wanted to revisit it and write about it. But I also knew that I didn't want the book to be, you know, just about that. I really wanted to write about uh, a dysfunctional family life because, you know, as I travel and talk to young people, there's a lot of young people who live in families where the parents argue, the parents are not kind to each other. And it's a very, you know, young people often feel that they, they kind of shoulder the responsibility for the, the tenor of their household, you know, even though they're not asked to, but they feel responsible for navigating, you know, their home life. So I knew I wanted to write about that. And so um, 
the two kind of just came together and and the challenger is is the thread throughout but really it's a story about family and and finding your 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 own safe space when you're not surrounded by the environment you need and mm -hmm. also about you know how tragedy how sometimes positive things well oftentimes positive things can come from tragedy and i think you know knowing that and remembering that helps us um you know keep up our sense of hope if we remember that sometimes it's really difficult when there's difficult times to remember that that light can come from darkness but it's something we have to remember because that's how we maintain that feeling of hope so even though it was a terrible tragedy on so many different levels good things can still come from from sad things mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and Terry. <laughs> That's hard to follow. <laughs> <laughs> well, yours is a different kind of event. <laughs> For sure. Um, well, mine was. Um, it it came it came from a personal space, insofar as um, I've been wanting to write about something based on my own faith, um, and I kind of challenged myself to write a book that was both uh, universal and secular mm -hmm. yet had a religious component in there as well. Um, so that was that was my big challenge. <laughs> Hopefully I pulled it off. And uh, because because I wanted to be a book for everybody, um, not just for Jewish kids, but, but I thought, oh my gosh, it was the perfect age for this. And I've had that experience. Both my girls have had that experience, unfortunately with me as their mother. Uh, around the event planning, because <laughs> I became kind of a villa, as I call it. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, so there's, I mean, it's it's perfect, I think, for a middle grade book because there's so much challenge and drama, and personal belief, you know, that's being challenged as well surrounding this this big event, and you have this culmination of the event itself. So. Um, it, it's kind of a book that wrote itself, um, based on a lot of personal experience and I had a lot of fun with it. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. 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 Well, and I think you both have touched upon the idea of the family, you know, the Godzilla and the, and you, the Aaron with the dysfunctional families. Can you talk just a little bit more? I mean, that, that is something that both of you have this very, you know, there's a strong strain of family in your books. Uh, and and uh, in in Aaron's case, it's particularly dysfunctional. But but Brianna's family is not perfect either, you know. So I'm wondering if you could talk just a little bit more about, I guess, how you see family in your book, the importance of it, uh, that kind of, of thing, you know. Uh, and Terry, how about if we start with you? Sure. Um, well, Brianna comes from um, a family. Uh, uh, a divorced family, so she's an only child. She um, she uh, has parents who share custody, so she's kind of going back and forth. But but the one nice thing is um, they're uh, they're all on good terms. Uh, yeah. Well, they start out that way. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> uh, there's there's a little bit of tension between the mom and dad, who, by the way, are, are friends. They, mm -hmm. they remain on good terms, but uh, but they're starting to, you know, <laughs> some tension surrounding the event. And of course, Brianna's caught in the middle. And um, so there are those overtones. And and it's kind of nice because you can you can see how Brianna's relationship evolves with each of her parents personally as well mm -hmm. over the course of the book. And um, so I, I definitely try and show that. And then she has extended family as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, who also get involved somewhat, especially an aunt, like a mm -hmm. like a favorite aunt of hers, and uh, so yeah, it's and of course her friends are kind of like family too. So there's there are all those components. Yeah, that's great. And Erin, how about you? I think so. For me, it's it's kind of twofold. I think one thing is when we're when we're growing up, we don't necessarily see our family as. How do I say this? We don't realize that other families aren't like our families because we're, we're so enmeshed in our own family. And then sometimes you have that moment where you go to a friend's house or you go somewhere else and you see how another family is operating for better or worse. And you think, yes. oh, wow, this family is nothing like my family. So my family is different. 
But of course, the truth is all families are different, right? And all families are imperfect in their own way. So my hope is that, you know, I really want readers to see either their own family reflected on the page. Uh, so it goes back to that thing of not feeling so alone. Um, but also, if it doesn't reflect their family, then experiencing another person's family, even in a book, can you just really opened your mind to, as books do on many different levels, to other people's experiences and what they may be going through. Um, yes. And I think, you know, one, one thread that's fairly common in my books is that, you know, the young people have adults in their lives who may be well-meaning and may love them, but don't necessarily understand them. And I think that's pretty common, right? Where you, the adults in your lives, um, they just don't get it, you know? Uh, yeah. and they give you advice that either doesn't make sense or doesn't apply to, apply to you or, you know, so I just wanna try to hopefully reflect all those different dynamics on the page. Yes, wow, okay, that's great. These are wonderful answers, two of you, thank you. Um, let me ask uh, Aaron this time, a specific question about your book. You have three main characters in this book, and I wondered how you chose to do that rather than having one main character. So I wanted to, it was, first of all, it's, a, it's very much a story about siblings and family, so I felt like multiple point of views would uh, really inform that goal well, but also I wanted to, a couple of things. One, I wanted to show how you can feel alone even when you're surrounded by people. Mm -hmm. yeah, even though you have siblings, um, it, you could feel alone anywhere and in any situation. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to show that, but I also wanted to show how people in the same family can experience the family differently. So I think anyone who has siblings knows that uh, the parents you have, well, the parents that one child has aren't necessarily the same parents that another child has. Very true. So each of the siblings in the family are experiencing the family in a different way. And I think it's important to remember that, you know, that, that one child's point of view of what the family is or isn't mm -hmm. is not necessarily the same because all children, of course, in a family are different and have different points of view. So that kind of steered me to this direction of writing from each of their points of view. Yes, yes. And it was interesting because I, I really was so interested in each of them. So that, you know, I really wanted to follow their story, each one, I, which I was fascinated by, frankly. So, um, and now Terry, I think we're, we're getting to be on the later, I'm, I'm going to be having to do audience questions shortly. So maybe you, would you do some drawing for us just to give a little <laughs> demo? Is that, is that possible or? I can, I can, this should be interesting. <laughs> I have not practiced, so you get what you get. <laughs> All right. But, yeah, I could, draw, I could draw Brianna really quickly, yeah. or at least oh, the top half of her. <laughs> so I have to give a shout out to my, my daughter. What, I have two very artistic daughters, and one of them, she, she loaned me her uh, her uh, very sacred sketch pad, so. <laughs> Thank you. Part of it, yeah. <laughs> so this is. I'm trying to remember how I draw her. <laughs> it's actually, been a, a little while. Can you guys see okay? I think we need to zoom in a little bit. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know what? I'll try and get a little. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's perfect. Great. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you. So I'm used to drawing on. Um, I have a, a drawing, ta a digital drawing tablet called a Cintiq, and I rarely draw by hand. Um, so it's when I go to schools, though, I will, I will draw by hand at an easel, and it's always very funny because usually it's really large scale, and um, and I'm used to drawing so small, so the proportions always come out a little bit strange. <laughs> <laughs> is this, is this, uh, Terry, is this style similar to your comic strip style? I'm assuming yes, but you know, um, kind of. It's 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 both similar and different. Um, so with my comic strip, it's actually um, from the perspective of a mother. So um, and it's a little. I think it's a little more stylized in a way. It's hard to describe, but um, I'll look it up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can just 
go to my website, there's a link from there. Here I go. I'm advertising myself now. <laughs> there's, there's a really bad drawing of Brianna. <laughs> well, that gives us a sense of her. You, you capture her little her personality very well like that. So. <laughs> she needs to be holding a book in her hand, I think. Because well, that's true. Right. Very right. bookish. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I think we'll go to audience question now, if, uh, if that's okay with you two. Okay. All right. So let me, I'm going to call up some. Let's see, we have a, um, a question, let's see, from Kara, um, and she asks, are there going to be any more books in the series? So I assume that's a question for Terry, because you're the one with the series. So uh, will there be more, that was a question I had too, so yes, will there be more questions? Uh, the answer is yes. Um, there's, I have, I actually have, two more books coming out one one is um a fa is, is the next book in the series so it'll be the mm -hmm. fifth book that'll come out at, around this time next year um and that's going to be i think that's going to be from the perspective of, a, of one of the boys this time so oh, at least one of one of the one of the two characters so, wow. so that's, that's a change for me um because i'm so wow. used to writing for girls but mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. So that's in the works, and I have—I actually have an in-between book coming out in October. It's an activity and a guided journal, sort of oh. a combination. Yeah. And I had the most fun in, of my life on this book, oh, making them feeling ten again. I, I was <laughs> making up puzzles and games and activities, and then you could do your own comics and write in your own journal. I love this book so much. I—I I hope you guys enjoy it, but. Beyond that, um, I'm not sure, hopefully. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll see. And then oh, hopefully that's great. That's great. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so I meant to mention that Erin also has does sketching and she, she writes in notebooks as well. Um, and uh, let me just ask a sort of the question on the sketching part. Did you do the drawings in your new book? Were those all done by you? Or? Yes, I did. So and I have next year I have a chapter book series coming out in oh. which I also illustrate. But oh. the illustrations in We Dream of Space are like these schematics. Because yes. Bert likes to take things apart and put them back together and she draws, you know, what they look like. So yes, yes I did these yeah. and then yeah. illustrating my chapter book series starting next year. Wow. Okay. Oh, that's great. And the the um the, the, the chapter headings, th there are little drawings too. Did you do those or were I those? I did not do those. No. no. Okay. Really okay. Cranston, who's a fantastic illustrator, did did my okay. cover art and those. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's look for the audience questions again. And audience members, you can still ask questions. So please feel free to add your question. Um, let's see. Okay. So this is a good question for both of you. Um, this is from Kiera and um, asks, um, how long does it usually take to write your books? So uh, uh, see, I, who wants to go first on that one? <laughs> I can answer really quickly. Thank you for that okay. question, Kiera. It takes about, it takes me about one year to write a draft that I send to my editor and then a, another year to do the copy edits and the jacket art. So from inception to holding the book in your hands, it takes about two years for me. Wow, okay. All right. Wow. Tara. Uh, sure. Um, mine's a little more complicated um, because of the illustrations involved. Um, plus, they're giving me, uh, I wouldn't consider it a tight deadline because I'm so used to deadlines, but um, I, I put out one a year. So I definitely have to get it in within the span of a year. <laughs> um, the writing, the, the actual manuscript writing um, probably takes a um, just a, just a couple months, um, mm -hmm. and I indicate where the art goes, and then I go back and I add more art to it, all the drawings. Um, so that takes many more months, mm -hmm. um, and then of course there's a lot of copy editing, going back and forth. So uh, that could take several more months, <laughs> and then uh, I, would, I would I would probably say uh, for the writing and um, all the all the spot art, which I consider part of the writing, um, and the graphic novel portion, probably a good uh, six months or so. And then I have to do all the um, finished art, which takes probably about four months. So it, it averages out to, to about a year, so maybe a little under. 
Wow. Okay. That's okay. a really complicated answer. Sorry. No, no, it's a good answer. No, and I just related to that. Um, and I want to ask, I'll ask Aaron about the new chapter of the series. Harry, um, do you um, do you think when you come up with your story, do you think in terms of art first, text first, or sort of all together when you're coming up with your books? Um, it's sort of evolved to where I'm thinking um, about. I come up with the writing first. Um, mm -hmm. Even with the graphic novel portion, I write that kind of like a script. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but the art is always in my mind. And what I do is, it, since it's so essential and kind of bridges a lot of the text together, um, mm -hmm. I'll indicate uh, like where the art should go. And if I have anything specific I want to say in there, but I'll type that out. Okay. I'll type out the indications, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Yes, yeah, yeah. And then, Erin, I'm just curious with your new chapter book series, which I didn't even know about this. Um, then, uh, it, um, what what has come first? Has art come first? Uh, text or definitely text. So yeah. I have to really think of myself as a writer first. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, a writer who can draw. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Art is definitely not. Um, in fact, I've had a lot of guidance on this manuscript from my editor her saying, oh, this may be this, let's think about this for the illustrations. And that's helped me flex that part of my brain. Yes. But uh, I'm definitely um, a writer. So, you know, first and foremost. So I think of the text first. Okay, good. Okay, thank you. All right. All right, let's see what we have for from audience questions. Um, okay, uh, let's see. From, uh, let's see, from Celia, who asks, what is your process for coming up with ideas? That's always a good question. So who wants to take it and run? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I mean, how do you come up with your ideas? So basically. Shall I wing it? <laughs> um, well, since I've got a series, every book comes from a different, I, I guess my ideas uh, are different for each book. Mm -hmm. um, I told you a little bit about the first book, Emmy, um, just based off myself and I just kind of freeformed the writing and it just luckily worked out. <laughs> uh, my second book, I kind of had to like squeeze it out of my brain. That was positively Izzy. And it wasn't based on any personal experiences really. And that's why it, it was like pulling teeth trying to write this book. And I must've rewritten it about four times from scratch. Um, Second book syndrome, as they call it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the real thing. Uh, so that that was just an anomaly, but it worked out thankfully, and I'm I'm still very proud of that. Book. <laughs> and, um, but Jamie, my third one, just Jamie, um, was was loosely based on something that happened to my daughter when she was in eighth grade, and it was like a form of exclusion mm -hmm. that she went through. And I thought, oh, that was just such a universal. Mm -hmm topic for this age group, mm -hmm. um, especially for girls, I think. Uh, so that pretty much spilled out of me. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I talked about the bat mitzvah one. Right, yeah, right. yeah, I think I yeah. covered it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and how about you, Erin? So pretty much all my books have come from the idea of a character. So I'm very character focused and yeah. my process is driven by characters. So all of my books have always started with an idea of a character in a situation. Mm -hmm. And then once it comes in my head and stays there, I, I kind of ask questions. What is the character doing? What is their life like? What kind of kid are they? What kind of family do they have? And then it just grows and grows and grows. So I'll spend months just doing that in my brain before I start, before I get a notebook and start writing. Wow, okay, that's great, thank you, all right. All right, let's see what other questions we have. These are all wonderful questions. Oh, okay. Um, Vivian asked, um, what's your favorite part about being an author? That's a tough <laughs> one, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, my, fav my favorite part about, and I suspect Terry enjoys this part too, is hearing from young readers and being able to you know, writing is a very solitary act, so you're doing it alone. And then publishing is kind of like a team effort of people who believe in your work. But but the most rewarding part for me is readers reading the book and, and hearing from them and getting their letters and their fan art. And, um, you know, 
that to me that's the best that's the most rewarding part oh that's great yeah and how about you terry oh i totally agree with that yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's extremely rewarding especially coming from a comics background where usually um I wouldn't say usually, uh, oftentimes um, I would get letters of complaint oh <laughs> from adults. So uh, not always, it's, you know, yeah. people can be very easily offended, let me put it that way. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I, I, got, I got really nice letters too, but, um, but it was definitely a mixed bag. And now of course um, I'll hear from kids who, you know, they'll, they'll fall, fall all over you and your work. And it's like, they make it feel so good. Yeah. And it's really rewarding. Um, I can't get enough of that. I love hearing from kids. Um, I would also say though, that um, just being an introvert, uh, I, I love the solitary aspect of this. Just like with writing my comic strip, I love being an author because I can just sit and be by myself and, with my imagination and see what I can pull out or just sit and, and do my art in the silence or, or, you know, or have something on TV or something, you know, it's just, it's just a nice existence. Um, Yes. For, for myself <laughs> yeah yeah so, yeah it's, it's a nice balance of, of the two i think okay okay and that actually leads into another question which is um this one's uh, uh let's see from kira what in let's see um what let's see what is the oh, see, i'm sorry this is from adele what's the favorite book that you've written what's your favorite book that you have written that's always a tough one, right? Yeah. So I love all of them for different reasons on my end, but mm -hmm. I, I do have a soft spot for my second book, which is called The Land of Forgotten Girls. Yes. Um, I love sad books and it's, it's a little sad and it's a sister story, which I also love. And it's all about the power of imagination to help lift us out of um, dark and dire circumstances, which is a theme that, you know, that really resonates with me. So, of course, I love all of them for different reasons, but yes. that's the one that's kind of like, you know, my heart. Wonderful. Wow. Wow. And how about you, Terry? Um, that is kind of hard. Um, I can tell you it's definitely not my second book. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it might, it might actually be a tie between my last two books, Just Jamie and Becoming Brianna. Um, these books really just kind of spilled out of me uh, mm -hmm. and really enjoyed writing both of them very much, uh, just for different reasons. But yeah. No, that's yeah. great. Yeah, terrific. Okay. All right. Let's see. What else do we have here? Um, let's see. Uh, okay. From, let's see, from Virginia. Uh, what is inspiring you during this stay at home time? Who? <laughs> Honestly, I, I read a lot. I mean, I read a lot anyway, but I've been reading even more. If that's possible. Mm -hmm. since all this is going down. And, and that's something that really inspires me. Reading other people's work, spending time with other people's works, you know, mm -hmm. inspires mm -hmm. me. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would. that's what I would say. Okay. Great. And how about you, Terry? Uh, yeah, I would echo that. I've uh, been doing a lot of reading as well, uh, finding more time for it. And uh, trying. I, I'm trying to do some new projects as well. Um, so uh, my favorite way of researching is just reading. And oh. yeah, and, and, I, and I, I'm inspired by a lot of the creativity of people nowadays as well, how they're handling the situation and you know how they're entertaining themselves and, and entertaining the rest of us. <laughs> and being able to do events like this too is, is really great because we wouldn't be doing this otherwise. So that's, that's yeah. another like plus, right? Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And this actually reaches a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, it's great. You know, other, an in-store event might not be quite as big. So this is great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let me see what else we have here. Um, let's see. Um, okay. Yeah. Here's, here's one from Deborah. And this is for Aaron. Is it intimidating to write a book after winning such a big award like the Newbery? What a great question. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, I'm going to say no, only because I feel very fortunate that I have a great, my, my publishing team at HarperCollins and Greenwillow 
-hmm. are very supportive of wherever my creative is my creative like juices are taking me or what have you. So I never feel, I always feel like I have space to write the books that are important to me and that I feel compelled to write. I don't feel like I have to, to follow up in a big way. And to be honest, you know, I would, I would probably have high expectations of myself no matter what, you know, I think creators mm -hmm. have to do. So the pressure would be there no either way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, you know, um, I try to take it in stride, right? I just I just write the best book that I could write that that speaks to me at the moment and hope that readers love it. That that's all I can really do, right? That's, that's all any of us can do. That's wonderful. It is, yeah, yeah. Let's see. We may have time for like maybe one more question. Um, okay, let's see. Um, this, uh, just trying to find one that might work for both. Okay, here we go from Kara. Um, uh, what what's the hardest part of writing a book? Hmm. <laughs> Is it getting started? Thinking about the idea? I don't know. <laughs> oh gosh, that's such a good question. I don't know why it's the the answer isn't coming so quickly mm -hmm. too. I mm -hmm. I guess I would say yeah, just um, trying to come up with an idea mm -hmm. for me sometimes can be a little challenging. Um, mm -hmm. I might have a an idea I think is is great, and then I'll talk to my editor and bounce the idea around her, and she's like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I trust her very much, so um, so yeah, I know you know uh, I, I like an idea that both of us are enthusiastic about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I definitely trust your judgment. So that, yeah. yeah, getting started can be a little intimidating. Yeah. I think for me, you know, I really love revision because I feel like that's where the best work comes out. So for me, writing the first draft is is probably the hardest part. And um, coming up with book titles is something that I really hate doing. Oh, I do too. <laughs> so I do not enjoy that. I wish someone would come up with all the titles for me. But, but no, I have to do it. So that's one of my least favorite parts as well. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And I, I didn't realize that you always have to do that, but you both have to come up with your own titles. Is that right? I didn't realize that. So, well, I come up with them and then, and then nobody likes them. And then, new ones. <laughs> and then my editor doesn't like those and I have to come up with new ones again. So oh my. <laughs> but they always come out better, but I don't like the process at all. Yeah, it sounds hard. It's awful. <laughs> well, yeah. I want to say thank you to both of you, Erin and Terry. I'm going to turn it over to Leah in just a minute, but it's been such a such a wonderful discussion. I really appreciate your time and your talent. And um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn it back over to, to Leah from Politics and Pros, who's going to ask our final question and uh, come back on. So, Hi. okay. Thank you for inviting me back. And thank you everyone, such great questions and contributions. Um, so before I wrap it up, I always like to ask everybody one last question. So what are you all waiting, reading right now? <laughs> I'm reading um, I'm reading Aaron's book right now. <laughs> so good, I really invested in those characters. So I need to know how it ends. Well, I, have to say, I read Ter I read Terry's book earlier this week. So um, now I'm reading The Once and Future King, which is, of course, is a classic that I've never read. And it's been on my, my to read list since I was about 12, which was kind of a long time ago. So uh, I'm finally reading it. So that's what I'm reading right now. An old classic. All right. And Karen, what are you reading now as well? What am I reading? I, I I have been reading, uh, just finishing up uh, Prairie Lotus, which is a new book by Linda Sue Park. I've heard which is great uh, things about very, that. Yeah, it's very, very good. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, thank you all so much for sharing. Oh, many thanks to everyone this afternoon um, and sharing your amazing books. And Karen, thank you so much for uh, mm -hmm. leading this awesome discussion. And of course, thank you all so much, viewers, for joining us today. Um, of course, don't forget, you can still click that shining green button on the bottom if you want to get your own copy of Aaron's new book, We Dream of Space, and Terry's new book, Becoming Brianna, and of course, all their other awesome titles. Uh, 
You can also click on the button at the very top, um, the politics and pros following button. So you can get um, updates on our other upcoming awesome events um, and also check out our website for other listings as well. You can also follow us, uh, our children and teen department on social media on at kids and pros. Tell us what you think, tell us what you're reading as well. Um, and I hope you can all join us again soon for our upcoming events. Thank you guys so much. This was amazing. Um, I hope you all keep reading, expanding your world and stay safe. Any last words? Just thank you. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. Awesome. Great. <laughs> Well, bye everybody. Thank you so bye. much. Thank you so much everybody. <laughs>